Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I talk about music, classical guitar, and just what it means to be a musician today. My name is John, and in this video, I wanna to talk to you about one of my favorite pieces, a piece that I've played for quite a while, probably since 2015, I think, the Danza del Altiplano by the Cuban composer, Leo Brower. I don't wanna waste any more time, so let's just get right into it. So to start us off, I wanna first talk about the history of the piece. So this piece was first published in 1964, and that would land kind of in Leo Brower's first compositional phase. So for those of you who don't know, Leo Brower had three compositional phases. He had his nationalistic, his avant-garde, and then finally what he liked to call his new simplicity. Now what makes this interesting is even though Leo Brower at the time was writing in his avant-garde stage, what makes this piece interesting is even though Brower technically wrote it during his avant-garde phase, he chose to write this one in a very nationalistic style, which is great because this piece was heavily influenced by the traditional folk music of South America, which we'll talk more about very soon. So one thing to note before I start talking about the piece itself is that this piece when played was oftentimes done with an improvised introduction. Leo Brower himself even did this when he performed the piece. Now, why I think he chose and felt okay doing this is because in folk music of South America, musicians would oftentimes improvise introductions to songs that they played already. If you want to listen to some examples of this, I would highly recommend to check out some videos or recordings of the proven guitarist Raul Garcia Zarate. So like I mentioned earlier, this piece was inspired by a folk work and that folk work would have been a song called Viva Hui. This song comes from the Andean region and is meant to evoke the landscape of Puna, also known as the Altiplano. So the next question is, what is the Altiplano? So the Altiplano just roughly translates to the High Plains. Now this specific Altiplano or High Plains happens to be in the Andes Mountains. You know, the same mountains that are the largest mountain range in the whole entire world and have an average height of 12,000 feet. Yes, those Andes Mountains. And the Altiplano is the widest section of those. So for this part of the video, I'm gonna only be talking about my own thoughts and opinions on how I think this music does this. And again, don't take it as definite. It's just coming from me, someone who's played this piece for a little while and has listened to a little bit of South American folk music. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the use of the pentatonic scale. Now, I know many people kind of joke in this piece because they think it's just one big pentatonic scale lick. Yeah, it kind of is, but there's a reason why. In this kind of music, the pentatonic scale was really the foundation of what they were writing. So much so that some of their instruments were tuned only to notes that existed in the pentatonic scale. This can be heard pretty much right away in the opening of the piece, which sounds kind of just like some pentatonic scale lick. Now to me, what I think it's doing though, is it's meant to imitate the sound of a flute. More specifically, a Peruvian flute or an Andean flute, also known as the cana. The kiana is a flute that's made out of bamboo usually, and it sounds something like this. Now when comparing the introduction alongside of that, hopefully you can hear some kind of connection and imitation there. Once this introduction is done, we finally get to the song part, which is also inspired by the song that the piece was originally written by. Just so that you have a reference, this is how that section of the song would sound. Now when comparing that to what Brower wrote in his piece, hopefully you can hear where Brower is getting his melody from. Now following this, we do have just a basic shreddy pentatonic scale lick, which I admit does sound kind of like a beginner's guitar solo because it's just going down the scale and isn't doing anything all that interesting. But like I said, culturally, this is definitely something that was a big part of their music. Following this, we have another part that I think is really supposed to imitate the kana, especially because it's just doing trills in the upper register of the guitar. Now we finally arrive to what Brower himself even calls the danza, which to me sounds much more dance-like because one, the song picks up speed as well as the melody that you heard before has now been moved to the bass, which I think to me makes it move a bit more. What makes this part feel even more dance-like you could say is that in some sections it has parts where it makes you feel the groupings of the notes as if they were in six, eight, even though they're in three, four the entire time. To get us out of this section, Brower uses strummed chords in the upper register of the guitar. Mm -hmm. 
Now, to me, this definitely sounds like an imitation of the traditional Andean instrument, the charango, which is a 10-stringed instrument, which is pretty close to the range of the mandolin, and it's probably the main complemental instrument in Andean music. Finally, we return to the main theme, which is pretty much exactly the same as what we heard in the beginning. The only difference is that Brower wants you to keep the speed the same as it was in the Danza, versus having it be the slower, calmer speed as it was in the beginning. To me, this is just to keep that excitement going and just not let the piece kind of die before it's done, I guess. Again, that's just my opinion, but I think it works really well here. So overall, what I think my favorite part of the piece is, is that even though it's such a short piece, it's that you hear tons of different characteristics and influences all packed into this one piece. Just like in the real Andes Mountains, when you can see pretty much everything from mountains to deserts to lakes to volcanoes to rainforests and even cities. So yeah, you know, the Andes pretty much has it all. What I also really liked is that Brower stuck pretty close to his original source of inspiration and didn't really stray that far from, if at all, from the traditional folk music of the Andes. Anyway, that's all for this video. Like I said, I just wanted to do a short little video on this piece because it's a piece I've played for quite a while and also a piece where there's not really a whole lot out there, even though a lot of people seem to play it. Hopefully you liked what you saw, and if you did, I hope that you consider giving this video a like and dropping a comment down below, letting me know if you have any questions on what I talked about or if you have any suggestions for pieces in the future for me to talk about. Also, if you guys are interested in seeing a full video of me playing this piece, go on over to Guitar Salon International's page to see the video of me playing this on 2018 Seth Miller Hauser model. The video will be linked in the description below. Anyway, that's all for now, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.